Okay, uh, good morning everyone and uh, good afternoon to some of you in different time zones. Good evening. My name is Dr. Nisha. I'm speaking to you from the sunny Singapore and uh, today with me I have three lovely guests. Uh, Melvin Ng, Sharihan Al-Mashari and Yvonne Maffei. In just a bit I'll be introducing them to you and thank you listeners for being with us on this panel which is going to be on rethinking experiences and activities, the next big thing. So let me just give you a little bit of a background to this topic and why we need to be excited about this topic. As the vaccination programs around the world are being rolled out, uh, there is hope now that travel will resume soon, if not immediately. However, people are expected to make uh, considered travel decisions and choices and will have high expectations of travel service providers. And destinations and tourism businesses, including hotels, need to find new ways to facilitate safe and innovative visitor experiences in a COVID or post-COVID environment. A report by uh, WWT um, 2020 predicts that four trends will influence and shape the future landscape of travel. Number one, demand evolution, health and hygiene, innovation and digitalization and sustainability. So today our conversations with the three panelists will be anchoring on these three and how tourism organizations, destinations, as well as hotels can reinvent and relook at tourism experiences as the next big thing to attract travelers. So uh, before I go into each and every um, speaker. Let me just briefly introduce each one of them. Um, Yvonne, she's a chef, food researcher and writer, cookbook author and an e-commerce entrepreneur and public speaker, food industry consultant, marketeer, and an expert in halal uh, speaking engagements. And she's the founder of the first website on halal food and cooking, which is Halal, myhalalkitchen.com. And what is interesting is that she has also been an invited guest at the Obama White House. Wow. And that's something really interesting that I hope to hear more from you. And next we have on our panel is Sharihan, uh, a lovely uh, co-panelist that I've met before. And she's a hotelier, deeply rooted in hotel operations management for more than 14 years. And what is interesting about her is that she has been a award-winning journal manager and the first female Emirati journal manager. And um, she has won several awards as the best general manager for UAE and the continent as well. Next, we have our male speaker here, Melvin, uh, who is currently the director of commercial strategy at KKD, as well as a regional director of Resios, taking care of the expansion in the region, I guess it's Asia Pacific region. Uh, with more than 15 years of experience, Melvin has held many senior leadership positions at various organizations including the Global Director and Journal Manager of Singapore and Thailand at AVA Raps, as well as, as well as Travel Zoo. So I'll hear more from you and your experiences as we go on. Panelists, are you all ready? We are ready. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, I'm really excited to hear your thoughts. Melvin, I would like to start with you. You know, um, when we look at demand evolution, right? Research is pointing to a trend that travelers will be more discerning, seeking quality over quantity when they travel and that travel is going to be more intentional. You know, it is going to be more about the journey and perspective rather than a destination. Now, Melvin, can you share a little bit about, do you see this as a trend and what quality experiences do you think travelers will be seeking? Will they be going to, you know, off the grid, off the beaten track destination towards a less crowded, less known destination? What are your thoughts on this? Right. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Nisha, for the introduction once again. Um, I think going back to the question that you just asked, um, yes, for sure. I believe that with the widespread usage of social media um, and the growth of content providers in recent years as well, all over the world, um, as well as the usage of review sites to make a better judgment and recommendations on where one should visit or eat has made a very big difference in travel. Um, people are definitely more savvy and prior to their travel, they would already have known where they want to go, uh, what they want to do, making their choices in advance. 
So traveling is all about experiencing right now. Yeah. So many years ago, when I was working for a five-star luxury hotel, um, we did not focus on just five-star service or all the, all the product offerings, but more about the experiences guests will yeah. get when they stay in the hotel. So similarly, when we look at the current travel scene, it is all about experiencing, which is also why at KK Day, uh, we look at curating very local, authentic experiences for mm -hmm. our customers when they travel. So mm -hmm. at KK Day, we actually have our signature, KK Day, we call it the KK Day Signature Tours, which we actually have our own guides, our own um, local uh, experiences, the vehicles um, that they can only get from us. Hence, that actually um, we bring our guests to all these unbeaten roads, like what you mentioned earlier, uh, to the mm -hmm. most local, authentic ones. And that kind of separates us from many of our competitors as we bring mm -hmm. value and authenticity to our customers through our online travel site for tours and activities. Right. So have you in the recent months seen a take up of your tours that you have designed? I think for sure, we, we have actually gotten a very huge um, take up. Um, if you look at in terms of the current environment, right, um, where KK Day um, has always been a channel where we look at providing various overseas experiences for the local guests, right? And there is a big shift because of this pandemic that people start to travel domestically. So in some of our key core markets like Taiwan, Hong Kong, Japan, uh, even Korea, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we actually have a lot of the, our existing customers going to do the domestic travels and our BD team are actively going out there to source for unique local experiences to be able to fulfill what the customers want within their domestic travel. Right. Similarly, within the Southeast Asia region as well, uh, where we are still building our brand presence in this part of the world, uh, we are continuing to create different kind of experiences within this region so that we can actually give a different option for our customers to be able to enjoy. Hence, we actually work with various partners, like in Singapore's context, we work with um, Wildlife Reserve Singapore, River Safari, to do a glamping. Mm -hmm at mm. River Safari, which is very unique. But so, yeah. so these are the kind of different kind of experiences that we try to bring forward to the customers. Oh, nice, nice. So to extend uh, what you're saying, I would like to also ask Yvonne this question, you know, talking about experiential and meaningful or immersive, authentic uh, experiences. People are moving towards what we call slow tourism, you know, and uh, it's about high value experiences that have less impact on environment and communities. So Yvonne, can you share a little bit about these, you know, uh, arrival of these conscious travelers and the need for slow authentic forms of tourism thank you dr nisha um i i think this is a really long time coming and it's also a very exciting time in the travel world because um in the culinary world slow food has been a movement for many many years and it's just about time that slow travel kind of catches up with that and i think that People have, you know, people who love to travel have probably pretty much been everywhere. And mm -hmm. I think now they're looking for unique places or if they wanna go back to the same places they love, they're looking for sort of micro experiences within those places that they maybe never had been to before. And as Melvin said, you know, the local experience is really important. So, and that really helps the local economy. I think travelers are conscious of that and they want to get those experiences that give back to communities as well. They want to feel like their, their money has, um, you know, done something good for the local economy. They're, they're really conscious of that today. And I think that's a fantastic thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and what are you doing? I mean, can you give an example of a uh, immersive experience that you're providing for your travelers? Yes, yes. Um, well, being the passionate global traveler that I am, I'm going by my own hunch and things that I wanted to see when I was traveling and the things that I sought out when I was traveling, being a foodie and really looking for like, you know, that that great tortilla place in Mexico, like where somebody was hand making the tortillas, but that that only the locals went to. You know, I was thinking about those kinds of things when I uh, went to Turkey, and I lived in Turkey for a couple of years, and I started to do food cooking classes uh, at my home. And what I got back, the feedback from people was that that their favorite part of it was going to the bazaar just to see the food, the local <laughs> food that's grown, you know, in that town yeah. and so coming off of that experience i've i've started now working with the local tour guide in fetia turkey and also with um sumeya hamdi of halal travel guide and we're putting together an, a local experience in that town uh just that sort of pinpoints all of these local 
uh, sort of, for example, El Pide Place or uh, the Bazaar Tour, uh, but but mixing that in with local heritage sites and right. as well as like a farm experience where people can see where the goat cheese is being made or a trout farm. You know, we've got a plethora of of options and we'll you know design right. accordingly. But it's just taking that local. Uh, geography and saying, you know, what's what's really unique and awesome about this place, yeah. and what are the things that people aren't going to find in the the travel book. But if you Perfect. talk to really local uh, people, they'll tell you, hey, that that one uh, family they make they have some great olives, for example. Oh, and right. working with that farm to say, can we come and make a visit? We're going to bring people there. You know, things. That's what we're working on. Right. And I'm really excited about that because that model can be can be replicated in other parts right. of the country right. and other countries. Absolutely. Yeah. I think what is really so heartening is that to see locally based businesses getting yeah. the um, the limelight, you know, during yes. this yeah. period, you know, and rightfully I always believe that tourism yes. development yeah. must be centered on the locals and the local community. And I think right. sustainability right. is something that uh, this pandemic has provided us an opportunity to rethink and redevelop our future development of tourism. Uh, with a, a, a uh, perspective of sustainability, right? And yeah. uh, so I, I want to also, you know, speak to Shari Han, you know, as a hotelier, Shari Han, can you tell a little bit about, you know, how hotels and, and resorts today can provide experiences that are grounded on sustainability and responsible tourism so that these will appeal to the, these new emerging travelers who are uh, uh, kind of like the walk generation, you know, and can you provide some examples from uh, your your hotel? Uh, well, you know, good good morning, good e good afternoon, and good evening to um, all of you. And uh, I think um, you all beautifully put it together. Um, it's all connected with the new mindset and the new trends that are moving forward. Um, a lot of these um, ideas of sustainable tourism and eco-friendly and environmental tourism and practices started uh, way before uh, COVID-19 or the COVID pandemic. And we've seen um, heavily in 2017, a lot of the hotels and the chains adopting some of those practices and implementing as part of their recreational practices and ideas, trekkings and, you know, um, uh, rock climbing within the hotels. So a lot of these little teasers started um, ahead of time. And then COVID-19, despite the challenges and the risks, has expanded that opportunity and yeah. avenue. So um, like we've all seen, the travel market has slightly changed, consumer behaviors have slightly changed, and there is more emphasis on the um, the S, the social factors or the impacts um, in the ESGs um, in sustainability. So it's now beyond environmental practice. Okay. What what people want now is um, the authenticity, as you all have uh, have put, um, in terms of corporate how they make decisions and the practices in the management, as well as the food. So some of the, the great um, dynamics that we've seen is the consideration for a demographic um, that we are having. So all the age groups, they want different things. So we've seen hotels, um, uh, including the ones I've run, um, have everything from a designated uh, spa environment and ambience within the room, high tech, and as well as the new additions of these VR gamer rooms. To kind of to cater to generation X, Y, Z, and also the millennials. And we've seen a huge demand for everything that is sustainable in terms of travel and consumers uh, to make their destinations, uh, travel destinations uh, for the future is the millennials really are focused or driven towards um, sustainable. Sure. Where nobody knows of, that's where yeah. I want to be. So what nobody else knows about, that's what I want to know about. So you've seen the change in demand and a lot of the hotels are now focused exactly on that. So having hotels built in the middle of the desert or a conservation area is, uh, you know, is a, a, almost a common thing now. And right. we will see that progress a lot more. Going green has been in the conversations for quite some time, but then I think now it's changed towards uh, vertical gardens, 
um, to actually be incorporated within the hotel designs. Mm. Um, eth ethical development and the structures of the hotel are being considered. So mm. some of the, the fun things that has um, uh, been implemented in terms of uh, hotels becoming more um, authentic or personal and having their own characters, which perhaps we have lost that in in the past because yeah. everybody just wanted to be, um, you know, um, a segment, either I'm um, in the upper upscale or mid scale or budget. Um, and now that, that's more changed towards having a personality. I'm going to go to a hotel with a personality and authenticity. So we've, we've seen a lot of, um, you know, uh, rafting, trekking, nature-oriented tourism happen across, um, you know, in the Emirates, across the seven Emirates, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. suburbs of the areas no one ever imagined, you know, having these uh, igloo-shaped uh, looking uh, camps, the glampings have become a common trend now in areas no one heard about, in, in the middle right. of the mountain, in the middle of the desert, watching the right. stars, so all of that, that was not part of a conversation, it is now. And with yeah. COVID-19 um, becoming part of the conversation, um, we are going back to nature. And this is what we've missed. I think a lot of us have been uh, um, yes. you know, secluded from nature for quite some time. And right. that's where the most discerning aspects of life is, because you know, it gives life a bit more meaning. We've seen Definitely. travelers actually starting traveling off travel season because they don't want the crowd and they want to experience what's local mm. and what's authentic. Mm. Now, um, mm. We've seen a huge trend of uh, sanctuaries being developed and hotels working very closely with, you know, if it's a, a flamingo sanctuary or a turtle rehabilitation centers and doing a lot more together as a hotel package activities for, for right. the guests. Nice. Uh, you know, for nature menus again, you know, the uh, are we vegetarian? Do we have something for the vegans? We've got a lot of, um, you know, environment and eco friendly conscious guests right now that, um, you know, have a specific lifestyle. Um, so, um, you know, rewilding has become a part of the conversation where a lot of the species that no longer exist in certain areas are Absolutely. giving, um, are being given an environment that's coming yeah. into play with hotels in the middle and the guests experiencing yeah. that wildlife yeah. thank you thank you Sharihan, because uh, i just want to shift a little to uh, asking melvin i mean are you catering melvin through your tours to these you know uh, what we call the 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 conscious uh, citizens of the world you know what what are your tours doing to center on them I guess for, for our side, right, I mean, we, we work with many different partners. Um, even when we look at our own tours, uh, we want to be able to see, um, find things that are actually eco-friendly. Um, I take one example of one of our, part, one of our partner. Um, there is this, um, if you have been to Taiwan before, one of the um, very authentic local experience is to release the, the Sky Lantern. In, yes. in this environment called beautiful, Pinsy. yeah, yeah, and, and it's beautiful, uh, especially if you do it in the evening time at dawn, etc. Okay. Um, so, so I mean, there are many suppliers over there. So, what we do is to be able to find a partner that actually provides a lantern that is eco friendly. So, when yeah. it actually get burnt, it, it actually burns right, and it actually diminish in the air yeah. uh, when it reaches a certain height. Um, yeah. it's actually yeah. eco friendly. So, mm. so these are some of the things that we look at when we actually bring in partners to come on board mm. Um, mm. rather than just bring in all the different partners. So that's why um, I think on an overall basis, there are a lot of things that we actually evaluate when we look at how we actually package a tour. Um, mm. Different customers will have different kinds of needs. That's right. why there are some customers that will design eco tours for them. There are some mm. uh, customers that will design family tours. Uh, couples tours, single traveler tours, um, and, and I think uh, we, we try to cater to different needs of our customers. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Melvin. I want to shift a little bit into what is happening quite interesting in, in lately, you know, when we are hearing a lot of innovation, like Singapore, for example, we are really looking at a safe, trusted and innovative environment at the moment, right? So innovation and digitalization has taken center stage. And Yvonne, I would like to uh, shift to you and ask you a little bit about this aspect that was highlighted in the WTTC report as well, you know, 
uh, to keep destinations visible at this point that people are not traveling and also appealing to future travelers, many destinations are also customizing the experiences of their destination via digital content, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Singapore, as I mentioned, you know, we have got this experience Singapore now, um, experience Singapore now travel later, where virtual tours are being um, created or curated and it ignites the interest of future travelers who may come to Singapore by experiencing this 360 uh, experience at the moment of either cuisine or attractions and you see that in Korea using their K-pop you look at Hong Kong looking mm -hmm. at master classes at the moment so that they could introduce your gourmet uh, now to travelers who would future uh, in future start traveling to these destinations right so can you share a little bit about your thoughts on using the digital platform uh, to sell virtual tourism experiences including even even gourmet what do you think well, i think it's a it's an absolute must today i mean everybody's online and from what i experienced people go to the places that they've sort of watched on instagram you know i just i was doing a clubhouse uh, um, talk the other day and, and, and one of the, the um, uh, listeners said to me, you know, I visited a place in Gaziantep, Turkey, because I had been watching this guy on Instagram for so long, I just got so intrigued and I had to go find his restaurant. I think that's yeah. a very common thing because we get attracted to what we see. So I think that they're very, very smart to put their uh, put all of their offerings uh, on these virtual platforms. I mean, oh. uh, uh, you know, it's it's going to be important for for the future to really uh, be able to see. You know, we're not looking, we're not reading very much anymore. Are we really looking at travel magazines as much as we are online? So it's almost mm -hmm. like a digital magazine to really pick through and to see, hey, I like this aspect of this place. And people can just sort of in their minds figure out where they want to go based on what they're seeing. And then, you know, that that sort of sort of starts the process of the desire to go to these places and then mm -hmm you know, to really pinpoint uh, restaurants, hotels, certain beaches, all of it. I think it's it's fantastic. And I think if anybody doesn't do it, they're they're really missing a golden opportunity, pretty much free yeah. advertising. In right. Sense. So are you using the digital platform to introduce new ideas and, and uh, experiences already? Well, that's how we sort of figured out to do our culin our first culin culinary tour in, in Fethiye, Turkey, because I lived there and I was constantly putting out all this content uh, between my, you know, whatever I picked at the, the pazaar, the food pazaar, whatever classes I was teaching, you know, any beach that I visited, anything. And people were going wild. They were sending me messages about, you know, how can I move to Turkey? Where can, where, what hotel should I stay at? I still get those messages and I'm not there. And I think the power of that social media is so strong that it, it just, and then the passion coming through but for the people behind the content. I think the content managers, the marketers really need to have, have a certain voice that, that shows okay. that energy and enthusiasm for a place. It has to come from an authentic place, obviously. Yeah. But I think influencers will be very important for culinary sure. boards to, to bring on because, you know, you can only, you can only show that authentic experience so long, uh, bef you know, without having a personal experience from somebody who's traveling and and, yeah. and and bringing people through that trip you know um to uh, on that trip through their eyes so another important aspect i think is to 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 take things to the social media where the millennials are especially tiktok <laughs> instagram yeah. you know yeah. facebook yeah. and twitter are kind of going away but i think okay. um you know th those are going to be really important as well Right, right. So, um, Melvin, can you can you share a little bit on this? You know, um, we have to try to relook at how innovative digital platforms can be, right? Because I mean, we have always used you know digital media to at least in the last ten years to bring tourism experiences. But now, uh, when you have are so crowded with so many uh, medium right out there, digital media specifically, what do you think? or can be done, right? Or what is your company trying to do to use digital media in an innovative way to bring these new experiences to your consumers? Well, I guess for us, right? I mean, we look at it in this current environment where the the everybody's going towards domestic travel um, yeah. and they're not able to travel out, out over there. So what can KKD do to be able to present to them what the authentic overseas experiences are? Um, so I think at this point of time, um, like what Yvonne has also, also correctly pointed out, we would definitely want to write on this opportunity of the virtual tours. Mm -hmm. 
um, which is why on our end, we, I was talking about the releasing of the Sky Lantern earlier, right? Um, yeah. And we kind of bring it over to the virtual front. So basically, a customer would be able to buy this virtual tour um, online with us. They can write the message and then arrange a time, a Zoom time, uh, uh, sorry, a, a Zoom uh, meeting where yeah. we actually do a live screening for them where we have somebody writing the messages for oh, them right. on the lantern itself <laughs> nice. and then releasing it, showing it live on how the lantern uh, and the lantern flies up. So it's, okay. it's kind of a form of prosperity. I mean, some people use it as an annual thing that they try to, to wish them as themselves and their family. And we want to be able to bring it over to them. Similarly, I mean, there are also customers who want to be able to, to, to understand a little bit more about space. And previously, they probably would travel to, to the US, to NASA, for example, for some of those unique tours, right? Um, and probably to some other places to, to see the space, I mean, some, some museums. Mm -hmm. so, so for us, we also work with partners like the Museum of Cosmo Cosmonautics in Moscow, where we bring these kind of tours where people would then be able to experience, wow, what is virtual space in, in that manner? So once they start to actually experience this kind of virtual, they would it, it kind of relieve or ignite the interest that I want to go over there. Right. And, 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 and that's where the revenge travel will happen. So yes. we ho ho hope to be, be the igniting switch to kind of also support the travel industry as a whole. Because, um, uh, I mean, these are, these, are, these are just some interest to keep people contented at this point of time where the travel borders are not open yet. But yeah, when nothing. travel borders are open, they will definitely be able to choose where they want to go, um, right. what they want to do. Right. I, I think it is important to be visible at this point and not, uh, you know, disappear. And then when travel happens, re-emerge again, you know. But uh, I think innovation is the key at the moment because we are so over. There's an information glut at the moment, isn't it? So, like, I call it info BCT, right? There's so much of information out there that, you know, we don't know what to pick and choose and, and to get the uh, the piece of, of uh, the top of mind awareness of the consumer. It's not easy at the moment, right? So, I think organizations got to be really, really so competitive. So I want to also move on to something else that WTTC's report had mentioned is that uh, about health and wellness. Of course, you know, this pandemic, uh, we have all become very conscious about safety, health and wellness. And um, it, it's not just about the physical state of wellness, but also mental and the social well-being of many people. Right. And while wellness tourism has grown even rapidly before the COVID, uh, last year, we saw a reported growth in internet searches about travel to wellness destinations. You know, people want that places, like you mentioned, you know, uh, not crowded with lots of space where even for spiritual or, or mental and social well-being. And Singapore has also uh, recently announced that it will be positioning our country as a wellness tourism destination, which is something that we have never heard of, you know. So, Shaihan, I mean, coming from the Middle East and uh, from Dubai, can you also share a little bit about what activities and experiences can hotels and resorts provide to tap on this rise of health and wellness travel market? You know, if you look at, it was an interesting, I was looking at also New Zealand, right? They had an initiative of a Spotify album of uh, meditative tracks uh, to calm listeners. And as a, they were providing a virtual Maori style yoga session that was streamed live from some of the beautiful places in New Zealand to again, uh, to get people enticed and attract them to come back over there. So this is again, tapping the wellness market. So can you share some of your experiences, Sharhan? Um, absolutely. And, you know, as we all know that, uh, you know, in uh, 2018, the statistics show that tourism does contribute to about 10.4% um, of the global GDP. However, the Global Wellness Institute uh, report in 2018 suggests that the wellness market will be valued at $4.2 trillion. So wow. that gives you the answer of um, the the magnitude of scope that this um, segment of tourism will bring. Now, um, wellness has been a huge trend within the hospitality industry. And as travelers are now more dedicated um, to words going to holidays that nurture their mental and physical well being, and most of them are as crazy as, um, you know, gearing themselves towards challenging 
physical experiences. Yeah. Um, spir spiritual retreats has been, you know, uh, something that has exponentially grown uh, within a lot of the, the travelers. Extreme a digital detox where, you know, they would separate themselves from technology yeah. completely um, in, in places that even would not pick up signals. So we've seen that happen. And like I said, with the, the Emirates um, having a, a lot of areas that um, are unknown to a lot of people in terms of history, in terms yeah. of um, its um, uh, conservations of uh, wildlife that are only specific to the region um, yeah. as also and deserts and all the seven emirates have a different um, sand type and tone and color so when hotels are opening in these specific um, deserts they actually cater to a completely different that people are starting to see um, and people are now really well-being is more than just the your regular R and R experience that people just wanted yeah. to relax and rejuvenate. Um, it's you know the packages that hotels are coming up with are um, beyond creative, and they know, and everybody knows that you know, like Melbourne said, there is a revenge travelers, and everyone is yeah. waiting for that to open up. Um, you know, with you know, post COVID and there will be traveling happening, you know, and it started happening. Uh, we've seen that happen this year. We've seen some happen uh, last year, but heavily towards the end of this year, we will see a lot more travel uh, resume. Now, um, again, reassurance um, is a key factor that will continue for even the year to come. So health, hygiene, safety, um, again, consumers want cancellation, leniency and uh, policies to be reviewed vaccination status, um, uh, pleasure, you know, the, the blend of business travel and leisure will continue significantly. So people might go to a destination for one or two day exhibition, but they really will focus for the next few days uh, for them to have um, something that they enjoy and experiment. Right. Contactless technology will continue to grow. Uh, and I think uh, both Melvin and Yvonne touched upon the AI and virtual assistant. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, all of these uh, make up what, um, you know, as a part of a wellness. So some of yeah. the fun examples that we have seen here, uh, as well as other places would be working on farms and fields. So people would actually go back to the essence of life, what it was in the past, and the things that we've never experienced. Um, and uh, you've got fitness boot camps that have been quite a norm here. Yeah. And also uh, wellness rooms, so rooms designed from beds to uh, you know music. And like you said, how New Zealand has, has done a Spotify a yoga uh, meditation um, album. So we've got all of that catered within your room. Um, 100 percent vegetarian um, hotels are coming up um, and also exclusive access to um, health facilities. So all of that has, I think, advanced the well-being destination from just yeah. a spa destination to something a lot more with an experiment attached to it. Um, right. So, you know, it will be a norm to have yoga mats in, in the guest rooms and, you know, meditation apps available um, and also like immune boosting mini bar uh, selection of products as well. Yeah. So fitness oriented guest rooms would be a norm. So, uh, yeah. so it's quite interesting to see how things develop, but. Well, we've seen that. And uh, just to right. touch upon one last thing, yeah. what I found was quite fascinating within the UAE was a lot of the Emirates that were not traditionally known as tourist destinations, um, Alain, um, and these are you know different far end borders, Kalba, part of Sharjah, Ras Al Khaimah, now they've completely um, positioned themselves exactly for well-being destination, um, okay. tourism and responsible uh, destinations with with even the history of uh, 2000 years of history of oh. that city um, has been displayed on amphitheaters and a whole film has a feature film has actually been developed and and shown um, about um, you know Sharjah and Horfa Khan so all the areas oh. no one knew about its history so wow. a lot nice. of that people look for and a lot yeah. of those experiences 
are now becoming the motivation for people to travel to and pick the destination of their travel. Yeah, it's interesting, Sharon. As you are speaking, you know, I'm just thinking about you know today. It's about being creative and look at existing resources that we have. You know, whether it's heritage or our own cultural resources that we have, and trying to resurface it and um, trying to put that together as experiences. You know, we don't have to rebuild or we don't have to build infrastructures today, but look within and see what we have. And uh, amazingly, new destinations have started to come up. You know. Uh, without really creating, but resurfacing, right? Good. Thank you so much, uh, Sharihan. And Yvonne, um, as as, yeah. as Sharihan was talking about, you learn a lot know, more about yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Shirley, Shirley. <laughs> yeah. Apologies. And, and, yeah. And and you yeah. know, Sharihan, so, so you, 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 you were talking about, about yourself. Yeah. So. yeah, definitely. And when you were talking about you know healthy food and and all. Uh, we we have also looked at uh, you know Crescent Rating came out with a report on halal uh, food and cuisine and mm -hmm. uh, research reports have actually shown that people are going back to looking at healthy food, organic food, you know very conscious about what they put into their body today more than ever before. You know, so Yvonne, could you share a little bit about what you see as these trends and what are you doing as part of your uh, delivery of experiences to your markets? Oh, this this is this is where I think uh, the real uh, the real juicy part is because uh, I think people are going as as somebody mentioned you know going back to the roots right going back to uh, traditional foods and I think people are seeing traditional foods as healthy. We're looking back. How did our grandmothers eat? Great grandparents eat. What did they do way back then? You know, natural uh, uh, from the farm. People want that again, not only to experience it as a as an as a, an experience that they can't get back home, but also to kind of regain their health. People are looking, especially after COVID, people are really looking to boost their immunity, to get back to yeah. nature, to to start cooking again, and they want to know how. They want to. They want to be reminded. They want to be. They want to learn. And I think these experiences, um, at least the ones we're also trying to develop, are the ones that really take people back to the roots of how things were done and how they are still being done in certain villages, for example, in certain restaurants. Certain chefs are really going back to traditional foods around the world. If you look at, um, you know, Chef's Table show on Netflix, the the most popular aspect of that oh, show nice. is people yeah. going, the chefs going back to their roots and then using what they have, their resources in their backyard, things they grew up with and creating Michelin star restaurants out of, out of these resources. And I think those are the places that are exciting for people to visit. But then they also want to get back to uh, you know, you know the, the 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 nature. They want to get back to smaller restaurants that are doing those kinds of things, um, local restaurants. And they want they want a variety of things. But I think the health health is related very closely to what is traditional, no matter where where they're traveling. That's right. That's right. I mean, thank you so much. You know, as you are speaking, I'm th thinking about what more can be done here in Singapore because we are really a, a food hub, you know, coming up here in Singapore and going back what else roots. we can experiment. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yvonne? Going back to the roots. I think that's that's the key to all. Any country yeah. in the world can, can, can really, any small location in any part of the world can really just go back, go to their backyards and look at, you know, what grows there. I mean, it's being done in, in just places you would never imagine, Norway, Sweden, you know, it's, it's fascinating. And I think that it's, it's, it's been talked about in the culinary world for the last few years. And now people who've traveled, they're getting into that and their, their, their interest has peaked. And now it's becoming a little bit more general and mainstream, which is very exciting. Cause I think that's, that's really going to help local economies as well. And it's just going to really excite the, the travel experience so much more. All right. Thank you so much, Yvonne. So Melvin, before we round up for today's session, what would you like to say uh, as a takeaway to the audience over here to summarize in terms of rethinking tourism experiences and activities? Well, I, I would say that um, I think a lot of the different travel companies or even consumers may think that um, when right now when I travel within the domestic markets, there are a lot of very interesting or new experiences being created. Mm -hmm. Similarly, this experiences is going to be sustainable because this yeah. same unique experiences is going to be available or, or be, be in demand for the international travelers because they want the local authentic ones. So whatever 
even though with this pandemic, right, we are really, every company is innovating themselves. And I think with this kind of innovation, it brings a different set of demand later on. And, and that is something that is going to be quite interesting. So then we look at the distribution side of digitalizations and how are these people going to digitalize and re-improve themselves? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Melvin, for rounding up on my behalf. <laughs> and, you know, listening to the three of you, thank you so much, Melvin, Sherihan, and Yvonne. It is so igniting to come up with ideas. And I'm already so juiced up just listening to you and thinking, <laughs> what can I do to curate tourism experiences, whether for Singapore or some of my clients uh, in the different destinations? So I'm sure the listeners have benefited from our session today. And I wish you all the very best. Until we meet again in from the different parts of the world, thank you so much. It's been a thank pleasure. You. Thank you for having us. Thank you. 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 Thank you.